Can they hear it? So do I Facebook share it now? Everybody that listens to the radio station, they hear the music. They don't hear us talking. But every yes man here share the video now. Everybody that watches Facebook Live, they can hear the music in the background. They can hear us talking. Say hi to everybody. Hey, hey, everybody. Hey, hey, hey. Don't look down there. They're up there at the camera. What's up, Spencer? Uh, talk to them right here. Hey, y'all. Hey, what's up, Spencer? Welcome to GospelRadioNation.com. Hey, man. Welcome, welcome. We're going to get started in a couple of moments here. a couple of minutes, that's right. And I'm going to share. Yeah, I'm going to share. I dare you to share a video. <laughs> okay, I'm going to share. And we're going towards. Well, I've been thinking about this. I've been talking about social media personal pages. I'm going to share this on page. Okay. 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 You recorded this video, though. It's straight to black. This one be on the page. Yeah, I'm sharing. Now, if I got two or three believers out there that don't mind seeing this, right? Once I finish sharing this, I will hit it. Right. 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 So you gonna do it again? Yeah. 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 Oh, all right, okay. I'm gonna finish it. I'm gonna talk to you. It doesn't make sense to start. I'm gonna get to know what you want. And I'm gonna get to know what you want. And I'm gonna get to know what you want. And I'm gonna get to know what you want. That's the instrument. So this right here plays into the next track, which is take that one up there. <laughs> 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 this is the music that I'm doing. And now it's time to hit like talk. And as soon as I hit like talk, you're live on gospelradionation.com. And hey, welcome Facebook fans. You're live on GospelRadioNations.com, and this is Marriage Talk Tuesdays with Tori and Terry, and we do have a special guest. Actually, we have two special guests, but one is getting ready to walk out. <laughs> <laughs> I got a talk away though. <laughs> <laughs> thank, you, thank you, thank you. We want to thank everyone for joining in. This is a new format for us. Uh, as you know, we've been doing Facebook Live for the last couple months. However, we've been blessed to have our own radio program. So. Welcome, all welcome, welcome. God. All praises be to God. I want to introduce you to my beautiful wife, Terry Smith. Hey, man. Welcome, you guys. We're so glad that you can join us, and we're just excited about what God is doing, but most importantly, we're so thankful to have your support and have you on the journey with us. So welcome, welcome, and good evening. That's right. And then we also have a special guest with us tonight. This man is uh, pretty brilliant in a couple of different areas. That's why we brought him on for our first as our first <laughs> guest. <laughs> but he's 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 really uh, helped us out over the last few weeks here. Uh, his name is Bailey Jordan, and he is the the creator. I haven't gotten it right. Is is it the owner or is it the editor? I know it's the owner, but yeah. well, how do you pronounce? Huh? You can just call me the janitor. It's all right. <laughs> I'm cleaning up everybody's mess. So. <laughs> He, he does it all with uh, his magazine, which is called Affinity Weddings Magazine. So we're going to uh, get into some questions with him. Uh, our topic tonight is uh, actually we're doing a, a topic on premarital counseling. Yes. And uh, we, uh, you know, we, we get a lot of people that are single, that are uh, booed up, or they have uh, different, um, they're in different types of relationships and all. So what's going on is that they want to learn how to be um, in, in a covenant relationship with God, meaning that they want to do it right. You know, so we already know that a lot of people live by the world and they probably 
engaged or <laughs> wanting to be engaged and they're really not doing it right. And uh, what's that F word, fornication? I just thought I was gonna say something else. Oh snap. <laughs> <laughs> but but they're, they're probably doing they're probably doing that. Um, you know, but if they want to learn how to live a, a, a righteous life. So uh we, we're gonna get into a little bit of that. But uh first I just uh, again I, I can't thank we can't thank God enough for how He's been blessing us over the past couple months. Yes, so you know, you, you know, we, we, we've gone from um, Zoom video conferencing to the uh, Facebook Live, and now we have our own radio program, which is great. I, I, I mean, I can I can I can I say something? You please? just did. I, I know. <laughs> I have to I have to acknowledge this because those of you that watch us and watch us regularly. What happened last week, we had, as those that, you know, follow us and are with us weekly, we had our guest on and there was an issue with sound. And so that whole segment, there was no sound. And we were, we felt so defeated and we got home, you know, we were talking about it. I'm like, man, we got to say something to, you know, to everybody. And so we did that small clip last week and we were just saying, we felt like we lost the big game. You know, we were so just exactly. sad, but then we knew. And then I don't know if you guys were able to pick up on it, but we have a theme song now and it's playing, it played right before we went on. And when we got home, we just kept saying that enemy is, you know, is trying. And we, we were going to stay in courage. And that's what it is. And that's the, it's, it's the same thing with your marriage. You know, it's like you stay in courage. And so we lived that out. We lived it out loud. And from there, um, we, we did our Facebook, you know, live post. And we apologized to you all. And right when we got in the house, we were just coming into the house. Right when we got in the house, we got the email with our theme song. And it was saying, look to me, look to the hills. And so... A week later, from last Tuesday to today, sound system is not a problem. Exactly. And so the That's Lord incredible. will do it. And yes, I'm saying will. that Why to say, will. stay encouraged in those challenges when the enemy thinks he's got you. Just, just continue to declare and decree, my Lord is bigger, and Father God sees it. So he's going to whoop them double for That's your right. trouble. That's right. And just want to give a shout out to Paul Richards from Music Theory. Uh, that's my band leader. I uh, sing with him, and I just um, want to give you. A, yeah, he's our musical director. I just want to give him a shout out for putting that together for us. And you, yeah, <laughs> so uh, we're definitely going to be using that. And want to thank all you guys for joining in. The reason we're kind of delaying a little bit uh, because we got so much to say, but we want to uh, allow more people to uh, jump on as well. But uh, we're going to change our format around a little bit. Uh, meaning that we have a call-in number now. So for those that can see the screen, yeah, we're big time now. Uh, our call-in number is 346-320-2103. And the reason I say it, it be, even though it's written on the screen, even though uh, the reason I'm saying it is because we're also global, guys. We're at gospelradionation.com. So, <laughs> Warnie Willie, what was, what was that number again? Willie, Willie. The number is 346-320-2103. That's the call-in number. Amen. So, if you guys have any questions that you <clears> want <throat> us to address while we're on tonight, or if you have uh, any comments that you want to say, uh, just feel free to give us a call. And if we're not too, too deep in the conversation, uh, you know, we're going to get to you. If not, feel free to go ahead and, and, and uh, log in and uh, make a comment there. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get started. We're gonna uh, say a little prayer. If you wanna lead us in prayer, actually, okay. I guess Thank you wanna lead you us in prayer? Love to. Okay, yay! Love to. Father God, we thank you for this day. Yes. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to gather together in your name. God, we just thank you for this amazing opportunity to be able to speak to your people about the things that you want them to hear about. We pray that, Lord, that you would just bless the listeners tonight and the people that are on Facebook Live, that you would just go ahead of them in their journey, God, and just show them who you are. Show them what it is that you want them to do and show them the direction that you want them to walk in. Yes. We ask God that tonight that, your, that uh, the words that we speak will be inspired by you and that we be able to bring you glory in everything that we do. Yes. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah and amen. All right. And I see some of my uh, favorite people. I see one of my brothers is on, and I see uh, Mickey, she's on. Yay. <laughs> hey, guys. 
So, um, I think I see Sissy. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't see, see that. It's covered here. up. But I yeah. Know, yeah. Hey, Sissy. Hey, Sissy. All the way from California. So, we have, uh, again, like I mentioned, we have uh, Mr. Brian Jordan with us. Bailey. 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 Where did I get Jordan from? No, Bailey, Bailey Jordan. Yeah. Good yeah. grief. Like the Irish creams of no relation. That's right. That's right. <laughs> And, and like the basketball Bring players, it. except except we don't take my. Calls. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so this is live, so I can't do. I can't, I can't do it over again. I'm sorry. We have Mr. Bailey Jordan, and I've been knowing him for a minute now, so I, there's no reason for me to mess that up. Why don't you tell us about Affinity Magazines and how you guys got started? Okay, uh, so Affinity Wedding Magazine is uh, actually a tool for us to connect brides and and grooms that are planning a wedding mm -hmm. with wedding vendors that are going to suit their taste. Okay. And so, um, you know, in a lot of ways we function like most wedding magazines do. So the difference is, uh, I would say the biggest difference is that we try to point people towards uh, their marriage versus planning for that day. Exactly. Obviously, as you're planning a marriage, that's really important to, mm -hmm. you know, know your budget and, and know what kind of uh, expenses you're going to have and and uh, finding the right photographer and all that that different stuff, but you know our main focus is is for you to start planning for the marriage, not just the wedding. Amen. And you know that's very interesting because we, we've been doing this for a few years now, and so many people by the time they get to us, mm -hmm. so many people have put more money or invested more money in their wedding versus the actual the marriage, marriage yeah. itself. Yeah. Well, you know, the average wedding uh, in Texas is, a, is a, a, well, I guess the average wedding in the United States, mm -hmm. I guess we're talking to people all over the country, um, is about $26,000 uh, for a wedding. Ooh. So, if How much is JLP? <laughs> <laughs> so if you, if you think about it like this, if you spend $26,000 preparing for the big day, mm -hmm. how much more should you spend preparing for the rest I of like your life it. with this person? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and uh, what, what we have found uh, a lot is uh, people will spend a lot of time, effort, and energy planning out the wedding, mm -hmm. but then they wake up the morning after the wedding, they're like, oh my now what? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, so let me ask you this. Um, so I, I got the general, or we got the general idea of, of um, what the magazine is about, but what was your uh, foundation? What was your premise for starting this magazine? Yeah, that's a great question. That's a great question. So, um, I uh, I started Affinity Weddings because one, I love love, <laughs> kind of like you guys. I mean, amen uh, for love. <laughs> <laughs> Three snaps. <Yeah. laughs> but um, <Yes>. twist. <laughs> but you know. Uh, the biggest uh, the biggest driver for why I do a lot of things I do in business is I really love to help entrepreneurs. Okay. And so uh, Affinity Weddings is part of a larger company that we have called Pyramid Publishing. Mm -hmm. And what we do with Affinity Weddings inside of Pyramid Publishing is we will license, kind of like a franchise, mm -hmm. uh, license uh, Affinity Weddings and other titles to people in different areas. Mm -hmm. You know, our goal is to help as many people get into business as we can because, you know, I, I have a, a strong belief that if we are going to uh, make an impact in our country, if we're going to make an impact in the world, mm -hmm. we need entrepreneurship. Yeah. Exactly. And so uh, Affinity Weddings is is kind of like my, my secret way of doing it because, you know, if you, if you think about it like this, we uh, as Christians want to, you know, grow our families, our churches, mm -hmm. our, our cities and things like that. You know, there there are two things that we need to do that solidly, aside from God, because God's obviously in the mix. Yes. Exactly. But number one. Uh, yeah. Um, so let's start with number two. Then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number two is we need money. Mm -hmm. Right. We need people that are going to start. Businesses. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, a, a lot of people say, oh, we don't need money as Christians. Jesus didn't have money. Well, Jesus had a treasurer. So okay. there's that. That's right. And then the second thing is we need communities. And how we build healthy communities is through marriage. Mm -hmm. And so the more people in a community that are married, statistically speaking, uh, you have less crime. You have, um, uh, yeah, you do, you do. You have more, a greater financial impact from the community. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of benefits. And so, you know, when I say I love love, I do. I love love. And of course, I love people starting businesses. So we kind of just married those two together. Mm -hmm. So since we like helping people out also, for all you entrepreneurs out there, 
what's the name of your publishing company again? Yeah, so uh, uh, Pyramid Publishing and our website is how to grow, uh, sorry, how to start a magazine.com. Okay, so if all you entrepreneurs, you writers, or you publish, you want to be publishers, uh, feel free to give Mr. Jordan a, a call and yep. um, we'll put out his contact information later. Uh, let me ask you this how can one purchase your magazine or is it for sale or is it yeah, in print great, or? Yeah, great, great question. So, um, we have a digital version and a print version. Okay. Um, and in terms of being for sale, yes, it is for sale. Um, and even the Houston territory is available if anybody's in Houston want to start a wedding magazine, which is where we are. <laughs> um, but uh, we have we have uh, territories that are open across the nation. And the way that this works is we've decided to uh, uh, partner with entrepreneurs. So let's say, uh, Tori, that you wanted to start your own magazine. Okay. You found us, and we will talk to you kind of about a little bit about your area and, and what kind of magazine you're interested in starting. Mm -hmm. And then. If we believe that we're a good fit for each other, then we'll partner with you. The way that we set it up is we'll take care of a lot of the editorial, we'll take care of the graphic design, the printing, the distribution, the website, social media, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's your responsibility to meet with uh, the different uh, advertisers that will be in the magazine and talk to them about why it's a benefit for their business. And so, you know, we're actually pretty solid system that we've created here mm -hmm. and there's no upfront cost. I was just about to ask that as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it is to have capital for all these different things that you want or ventures that you want to get into. So yeah. when you say no upfront costs, you mean any back end costs? <laughs> <laughs> so um, you know a brief history of my my journey, when I started in business, I didn't have any money. Mm -hmm. None at all. None at all. <laughs> um matter of fact, my bank account was negative. Um but the thing that really helped me was just getting out there and working hard. Okay. And then eventually I was able to make money and then pay a couple of bills and then make some more money and pay a few more bills. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I know what it's like to start a business and, and have no money. So I wanted to create a system that allowed people that want to pursue entrepreneurship mm -hmm. to not be restricted by money. If you have a, a strong desire and you want to work hard, then there's opportunities for you. Right. Um, and then to answer your question about the back end cost, no, there's no back end cost. Uh, the way that our model is set up, like I said, we're we're your partner. Basically, mm -hmm. we walk you through everything you need to know. We give you training, and we don't just send you out there to the wolves. Okay. So yeah. Okay, good, good, good. So I ask you, where where, where would you where would you purchase this thing? Is it in print or is it electronic? Oh, so all of our magazines are for, uh, free. So mm -hmm. oh, uh, wow. Yeah, so yeah. so if we started, let's say you would have started Affinity Weddings here in Houston. Mm -hmm. Well we would partner with you to get the magazine put together then when it comes out it's free for people to pick up wherever it's, uh, you're distributing it throughout the city okay. of houston so uh, do you attribute that to sponsors <clears throat> uh, that's why it's free mm -hmm. okay you know what we found is that it's a lot harder for people that want to advertise to spend money in magazines that people have to pay for mm -hmm. because if you have a choice between eating lunch and paying for a magazine you're gonna eat lunch yep. If you have a choice between, you know, picking up a good book that a friend recommended you were buying a magazine, you're going to buy the book. Oh, so, awesome. you know, I want you to pick up this magazine and see all the people that are supporting the magazine. So And to get the help for the content. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, to definitely get the help for the content. Exactly. Well, uh, and there's no secret about this since the majority of our audience is uh, African American. As really? an African American male. <laughs> Don't say. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> As an African American male in a pretty much white dominated society mm -hmm. such as this, what are some of the stumbling blocks or roadblocks mm -hmm. that you've met with? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> um, Just a few. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, you, you want me to be honest? Of course. Please. Like completely honest? <laughs> You know, uh, one of the biggest roadblocks that I've run into in business is working with other people of color. Yeah. Um, Crabs in a bucket mentality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you go through that just the same. Yeah. The, the truth is, is that um, you know, I I would love to help everybody. Mm -hmm. Right. I want to help people of all colors start businesses. However, I I feel like God has really called me to the African American market. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so you know I uh, <laughs> I tried very hard, but a lot of times you know there's a a pervasive mentality that is 
really holding holding the community back. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, there's a lot of things I talk about. I'm not going to go into it. Anymore. Well, that's why I asked you that question, though, because I I know. I mean, I'm in healthcare outside yeah. of here, and uh, sometimes I'm the only one in the room. Yeah. I don't care what city I'm in. I travel all over the United States. Yeah. Sometimes I'm the only one in the room. So uh, not that I don't run in, into any roadblocks or anything. I know it has to be hard for you because I've seen your magazine yeah. and I've seen uh, you know, the, the models that are in there and, and the advertisers that are in there. So, uh, you know, uh, and I know we don't own <laughs> a lot of these conglomerates and things of that nature. So that's why I asked that question there. Yeah, you know, it's, it's it's hard because you know I, I wanna I, I really want to help mm-hmm. uh, you know African Americans, but you know a, a lot of the time they they kind of have their eyebrow raised looking at me thinking mm-hmm. I'm you know, being shifty or something like that. And, you know ultimately my goal is to help. Okay. And so if I have an opportunity to do so, I'm going to do it. Okay. And you know if I can help more African Americans, I'd love to do that. Okay. Well, speaking of help, and this will be our last question here, so we can get into our marriage counseling. But um, do you have anything to pass on to our entrepreneurs out here or actually not even entrepreneurs, because I want you to tie this into our theme here. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have anything to pass on to engaged couples you know, couples what? that it's, are wanting to be married? It's so funny you say that because the advice for both is actually the same. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to be willing to outwork anybody else okay. mm-hmm. you know if you That's want to it. be successful as an entrepreneur you got to work hard yes indeed. you know and um, you got to put in that work absolutely. and that time and that muscle yeah, absolutely that's you know in, in any given night you can ask my wife i, I sleep maybe four or five hours a night mm-hmm. and uh you know i i work a lot now i don't neglect my family time mm-hmm. because to me you know achieving my my goals financially are, is very important but not more important than my family mm-hmm. And so family is everything. Like absolutely. This. Exactly. So, you know, what I'm saying, I, working hard, if I if I have to choose between working all night or spending time with my wife, mm-hmm. I mean, I got you. yeah, <laughs> my wife wins every time. Gotcha. Okay. So, we go through that. I mean, yeah, we go through that. Just in case my wife is watching, she is <laughs> super beautiful. In the love of my life. I hear you. I hear you. Let me see you. All right. So uh, we'd like to thank. Uh, Mr. Jordan again for joining us tonight. He's not going anywhere though. Uh, he's going to actually help us out with some of the uh, marriage uh, questions that we we have here. If there's anyone that has any questions for him though, feel free. Our call in number is 346-320-2103. Okay. So um, our question that we receive uh, comes from, and the reason we chose it, uh, obviously specific for this topic here. Yes. Um, the question reads, I recently got married to my boyfriend of six years. I know that I should be happy, but I'm not. I feel like he only asked me to marry him because uh, I've been on this case for so long. And my mother is always asking me and him, when are we going to get married? If I go through this, if I go through with the wedding, the way that I'm feeling now, I know I'm going to mess up his life and throw away six years of a perfect relationship. Should I get married or to him or not? First thing to tell you, and I don't know your name, but the first thing to tell you is that we're not here to determine if you should get married or not. But what we are here to do is to give you some insight as to why you're feeling that way. So um, my thing is, you know, marriage is a base. It's the most basic and significant social relationship that we're going to have in our lifetimes. And it's very important not to dip a toe in, but you know, if you're going to do it, you have to be all in. But in order to be all in, you need to to be all in within yourself. Yes. You know, you have to. You, you guys agree? That's yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So if you're not feeling comfortable with this, you know, obviously there's a lot of interpretation there because you know you were feeling pressured, and and that's what that's what from reading your your letter, that's what it sounds like. You're really feeling pressured to um you know to to you know marry uh this guy and we actually talked about this a few weeks ago on one of our segments in which um we were talking about uh, should i be friends with my ex and we were saying how um some people mess up a perfectly good friendship by getting married and then once they get married they think they've known each other for so long 
Yeah. Exactly. And then when they get married, everything goes, you know, to whatever, you know. Yeah. And primarily because they've been best friends, but they've been living apart. And the big thing is when you get married to somebody, uh, remember you were saying, what's, you know, okay, we've we done this, this wedding, now what? Yeah. The now what is actually who the heck are you? I really don't yeah. know who you are. I don't know you at all. Yeah. I don't know you at all. Yeah, you believe dating. in your best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, best, you know. Chris Rock said it best, you know. <laughs> You're not dating him. You're dating his representative, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know. So he said it. Yeah, that, yeah, and, yeah, that's good. Yeah, but but that's so true because when you're dating, when you're, when you're trying to get someone, you know, obviously you're gonna put on your best face, and by putting on that best face, you, you know, <laughs> what the other person, what I don't understand is the person you put on that best face for. How come they're not recognizing? Okay, so. Is he this nice all the time? You know, you're a woman. Tell us yeah, that perspective. You know what? I mean, in, in relation to this here, this question, so, I mean, to pick it apart and to break it down, she's been with him six years, mm -hmm. okay? Um, she's time. kind of badgered him because she's feeling her clock. Yeah. And then she's got her mom over here, you know, so she's feeling, as most women do at certain stages and points of their life, you know, you grow up, you go to college, you get into your career. There's mm -hmm. these next, these next, next levels, steps, yeah. these next steps. And so, especially between, I want to say 27, 26, 27 to 35, you're like mm -hmm. expecting to take that next yeah, leap. Yeah, just to keep progressing. Yes. Yeah. And then from there, you know, you know, because we bear children, you have, you know, your family and stuff. And so, She's not only feeling the pressure from society, mm -hmm. maybe her her girlfriends, her community, mm -hmm. and her family, her mom, mm -hmm. but she also feels I've been with this guy six years, mm -hmm. and that's what yeah. she said. What's I happened? throw it away. Yeah. I got to start over. She doesn't want to start over. Yeah. And so she's feeling that. So does she just have she, cold feet right now? No, 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 no. I think that she's feeling what she doesn't understand because she doesn't know. And she's got to go to God with this. Mm -hmm. Is she's going through the motions, mm -hmm. and so she's checking boxes in her life, thinking that's what you do. She doesn't know about marriage, so mm -hmm. she doesn't know if that's how all marriages came about. Exactly. This and, is just and, what and you do. We you know say this in counseling. To, uh, you know, if we ask our counseling couples is, what did marriage look like in your household when you were growing up? So do you come from a single parent household or were your parents married or together? And you typically model whatever you learn. I have this old saying, I've been saying it forever, you only know what you're taught. So if you're in a relationship and you're emulating what your parents did, good or bad, that's what you're bringing into your relationship. Same thing with your children. And that's why we have this, that's what's so good about I Forever Will, because we're teaching you new ways and we're also acknowledging that it's okay to feel what you're feeling, but let's get you, um, let's let's help that make sense for you and how to move well, that into Christ. And let's see and, what the Bible and, says, though. Yeah, well, please. Let's, let's, but we def, that's what I was going to say, the word, we definitely yeah. have to take it to God. That's exactly, right. yeah, exactly. Uh, in Genesis 2, 18 through 24, and I'm paraphrasing here, marriage was instituted by God for the purpose of reflecting the relationship of the Godhead Mm -hmm. And ultimately to serve him. That's yeah. his, that, that, that's, that's the right. main purpose of that's right. That's yeah. what this is. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. what this is. Thereby, um, you know, the relationship aspect of God's image is reflected in the bringing together of a man and a woman mm -hmm. in one flesh. That's good. Yes. So, you know, that, that that's yeah. God. So, Christ, yes. Yeah. So I didn't hear anything in scripture about know. you know my feelings or this or that, you know. But so that's where marriage yeah. is. So like we tell everyone, you start out with God. You, you you pray to God. Instead of writing a letter to us first, we appreciate the letter, don't get me wrong, but instead of writing a letter to us first, you take it to God. You ask God why you're feeling that way. If, if the person that you're getting ready to marry, if, I don't know if he's a good guy or a bad guy, you say you, that you guys want a perfect relationship. But the thing is, is that, uh, again, if you're not feeling it, you're you're truly going to mess up the you know the marriage if you get married because if you get married 
And I, well, I, the answer lies in Christ. Christ is going to give the ultimate answer. Exactly. You know, and well, her not well, feeling well, is one of the flags. Yeah, well, what I was going to ask next, though, is um, are they saved? You know, I, I mean, I would assume There's because so this, people yes. send us these these letters and all, and they know that we have a Christian-based business, uh, you know, so I assume that everyone is saved, but we can't take that for granted. Right. So, one, are they saved? And if not, is she saved and he's not, or vice They're versa? Yo, you know? the so they that have to right be there equally is, yoked. Is huge. E exactly. That's huge. And we know that's going to be something. That would be something to overcome if you. So that's yeah. just another challenge that you bring on when you're unequally yeah. yoked. So. And for those that don't know about being equally yoked, is not having the same things in common. Is not. Yeah, you got three guys like my grandmother. I know, right? You know. <laughs> 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 His dad named Bobby and mine, my, uh, uh, my dad named Bobby too. Yeah. You know, that, that's not what equally yoke means. You know, you, you're equally yoked in Christ. Yes. You know, so uh, you know, both of you guys are saved, and you know, and we talk about this all the time. Uh, you know, if the wife is saved and the husband isn't saved. Uh, it says in, in, in First Peter that you know the, their prayers aren't well. His prayers aren't going to be answered. You know, if he's treating her wrong mm -hmm. and, and, and the relationship and all, if he if he's out of alignment. So, what are your thoughts on this, uh, baby? Oh boy, um, you know, uh, first of all, I have to agree with what you said. You, you got to take it to God mm -hmm. because you know, anytime I think that you look. <laughs> for other people's, let me preface this by saying this is what I struggle with sometimes. Okay. But anytime you look for other people's opinions before you look for God's mm -hmm. opinion, it never work out. It's just not gonna work. Yeah. And especially about something so heavy as marriage. I mean, gosh, man, if you think about it like this, the very first thing that uh, that God did when he had a man and a woman together is, is join them in marriage. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty significant because he could have just said, okay, I'll tell you what, you go over here and do this, and you go over here and do that, and then we'll just see how this works for a couple thousand years. But that's not what happened, mm -hmm. you know? And Well, he put that, together let no man put a son. Yeah, absolutely, that was, that was absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, um, and, and just to be honest with whoever your your uh, person that wrote in, you know, Amos 3, 3 says that. Unless we yeah, walk together. I mean, I'm sorry. How can two walk together? <laughs> I can two unless they agree. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, it's one of my favorite verses. <laughs> yeah, and it, 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 you just can't do it. Exactly. So, I mean, yeah, I'm, I agree with what you're saying, what you're saying 100%. Exactly, exactly. So, um, <laughs> that's exactly what I was going to say because, and I say it a lot. Yeah, yeah, well, I, no, I do because if you're not in agreement, you can't walk together. Yeah, either. absolutely. Absolutely. Right? So yeah. I refer to Amos 3 3 a lot. <laughs> in that. Yeah. So, anything else from a woman's perspective on this? I would personally, I would suggest to her to pray on it. Mm -hmm. I would also not only ask God, what is it? Because I'm even wondering, why did you go six years? There's something that's yeah, kept you together for six yeah. years. So, really assess your feelings of your mate mm -hmm. because it can be cold feet people that are very deeply in love get cold feet so you know and that are they're a match made in heaven they can get cold feet just the mm -hmm. idea of it all you know um so we don't know again at what stage she is in her life but what i would i would strongly suggest is that you pray god and you ask god to reveal you those things about you mm -hmm. that if you want to be a wife and that's what you gotta ask yourself do i want to be a wife or do i want to be his wife Mm -hmm. And so you ask God to reveal those things in you and then to begin to help you cultivate that of a Proverbs 31 wife so that you can be prepared to be that. And then ask him if once he answers you and he will answer you, um, is this for me? Is this your, your plan for me? Because we want God's way, not our way. And then we want to make sure that if it's not that he equip us to be able to have that talk with our mate, not necessarily breaking up. But that I'm not ready right now you know, because delay me. doesn't need denied. And talk to your mom too to have the, the confidence. Well, her mom needs to stay out of it. Well, first of all. yeah, you know, um, me and uh, me and my wife, we we dated for five years, and uh, you know, I was like, okay, look, what, what are we doing here? And uh, I actually proposed to her, and she told me no, and I and I said, fine, it's over, I'm done with this. <laughs> but you know, was that your ego? Oh. Uh, I just saw I She's probably so listening, so I refuse to answer. Well, ego <laughs> means he's easing God out. Yeah, yeah. That, that's my idea. Okay, okay. 
So if God wasn't in it, you know, yeah. you, you was doing it on your own. But you know what? When we, we got back together and eventually got married, she told me, uh, she said, well, the reason why they married is because you were so immature. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and I, she's like, I felt like you were immature and I just wasn't ready to deal with you mm -hmm. being so immature. Wow. And, uh, and, and, you know, at first I was offended, of course, but, you know, as, as I really thought about that, she's all right. Yeah. You can yeah. respect it as you mature. Yeah, yeah. You, you can exactly. Yourself. Exactly. Like, okay, you know, I, I, I knew I, I was it. ready to be married, but I didn't understand the work that it takes yes. to be married. Oh my goodness, we talk about that all the time, trying to come couples of how much work. This is this is a job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, 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 it's a full time job. Yeah. Like you had on a hard hat and boots. I'm happily married. I am. For, some people, some, for some people, it's a job. This is you got to throw the hard hat on and you gotta get out there and stuff. So let, let, let's, let's kind of switch it around then. So, can I say something to y'all? Yes. I don't know if y'all know, but listening from back here, y'all all on the same page is so crazy. Because y'all are talking about Amos. Mm -hmm. How can two walk together? And then you're talking about being equally yoked. But you have to explain to the young lady what a yoke is. Because most people are crazy, they don't even know what a yoke is. And so right. to understand that it's the piece of wood that connects the two oxen mm -hmm. or the two mules that pull. And if they're unevenly yoked, you got a, a mule yoked with an ox. One is slow, one is lower, and one, one is, is dragging, exactly. one is this, or one is mature, and one is immature. So that's an unequally yoked. And because you're unequally yoked, how can we walk together? Exactly. Because we don't agree. And so everything that y'all are saying is just, it's just a trip to me. I think that people, most people don't know how to grab that scripture and use it in their relationship. Mm -hmm. They don't even know what a yoke is. Yeah. They start thinking about eggs. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, and, and I, I, we don't even have to answer because Pastor Chris has answered yeah. it for us. But the thing is, is that, uh, you know, the Bible uses a lot of metaphors from agricultural exactly. perspectives. Yes, sir. So you really have to understand can when I you're actually, reading the Bible. Can you give an example of, of yes. a yoke in, in a more millennial time? Sure, please. In the <laughs> millennial if you think yes. about the old rush, right? And you got two people that are holding either end of the jump rope, uh -huh. and they're both going. If they're not in sync, the person in the middle is going to get hit with the rope. Right. Yeah. Okay. And that's good. the millennials even know what uh, double that, touch is? Man, I don't know. <laughs> no, double touch is not even. Tell them the YouTube. Is it too? Is it too? Is it too? Is it You just hate yourself. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. So, so yeah, how do we know <laughs> if our partners, those that we've already married to, how do we know if uh, we were supposed to settle down with them for the rest of our lives? Mm. Well, I mean, I think there's a lot of people that have thought they knew. Mm -hmm. But we're all changing and evolving. See, there you go. You I, know? I believe now. Okay. <laughs> we're all changing and evolving. That was it. Yeah, that and so it. who you are today uh -huh. is not necessarily who you're going to be next year. But the main thing is that you come into agreement. There's that word again. Mm -hmm. I love you, and I am in agreement that I will love you for better, for worse. Yeah. And Even if you don't now, evolve. For richer, for poorer. <laughs> Yeah. When you piss me off, yeah. <laughs> you know, when I want to go forward in education and you're comfortable where you are, it's okay. Love me for who I am. Right. That's the good, bad, and the ugly. That's when you know. I'm about That's to give you know. an analogy. Go ahead, and I'll give my analogy in a moment. Oh, you know, yeah. I, when, you, when you asked that question, I was thinking about what the pastor was talking about here, about the yoke, mm -hmm. about the two oxen uh, working together. You know, how they perpetuate that cycle is you have a, an experienced oxen and an inexperienced one, and the experienced one will drag the other one until he gets in line. Mm -hmm. And what it's meant to be is is that as the experienced one is going forward, the other one's kind of like, okay, all right, I guess I got to go too. Mm -hmm. And then they eventually get in sync with each other. Exactly. Yeah. And then what happens is as the older one begins to age, the younger one takes the, takes more of the, mm -hmm. the pressure. Mm -hmm. And then it's kind of like just give and take that they spend take their it. time doing mm -hmm. it. And, and actually, that's a perfect segue a into what I was it's getting ready to say. Yeah. So yeah. a marriage, as we know, isn't two perfect people that have gotten together oh, and that you know they, they just figured everything out naturally or through osmosis? Osmosis, <laughs> it's, 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 it's not like that. You know, <laughs> a marriage is two <laughs> imperfect people that have gotten together. Wait, what? Two imperfect, imperfect. people that have yes. gotten together and they have to work things mm -hmm. out. That's what I said about the job, about this being a job and all, right? Take this key here. Can, can you guys see this key? I'll, I'll put it closer. So, 
before this key was formed the way it is now, it, it was smooth, right? Mm. And then what happened is that, uh, let's talk about the pirate's wheel, that is, you know, relate this to the pirate's wheel. So it got pretty much in, in the pirate's wheel and all these little jagged edges and stuff that make it a little rough on the edges and everything now, you got some parts that are still smooth, mm -hmm. but remember I said about two imperfect people, and then you have these ridges here, these, these, these jagged edges, right? However, when you meet that right person, when you put this key into that keyhole, all right. Why are you smiling, baby? This conversation. Is <laughs> I, don't I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be a part of this conversation. I'm not taking it. It's, it's a key, man. It's a key. It's a key. Anyway, when this key, nah, when this key goes in the key, hole, and it, it matches the tumblers that's in there, and it's able to actually turn. This is what your marriage is. That's the journey as well. That's, that's the, the journey. The journey. That's exactly. why it fits so well because you've gone through the journey exactly. together. Yeah. You know, we, we we have people that that's been married a couple months, and after the newness is over, and then they're wondering why they're fighting and arguing. That's the jagged exactly. edges on that key. Yeah, and it's a marathon. You and it's a marriage. Right. That was a, <laughs> it's a, it's a, a lot of journey. Exactly. It's a valley. Exactly. So one of the things I would suggest if you know. First, when you first found the love of your life, he's proposed to you and vice versa. And then these days, you know, first thing I would suggest, take it to God in prayer, right? Mm -hmm. Second thing I would suggest, enroll in premarital counseling. Mm -hmm. Guys, you just don't understand how important this is. You really don't. You need to, it, you know, you need premarital counseling. Mm -hmm. Premarital counseling helps couples, you know, it, it, in their road to getting married you know it's, it's not you know okay come on in we want to talk to you uh because the pastor isn't going to sign off on this uh, you know uh, uh, until you right. you've taken these classes that's not premarital counseling premarital counseling is you know the ability to improve your communication set realistic expectations about your marriage um develop conflict resolution skills uh, you know, amongst other needed skills. It's so, a reality check yeah, because you're in exactly. euphoria. You're so happy and you're looking for rings, you know, and dresses and who's going to be in it. This is a reality check because this is your future. Exactly. And this is your life with you know, another person. I, I, got, I just want to throw and this in there. I think post-marital counseling is important too. Oh, yeah. Because you know, we talked. That's so why we have business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Both of them. You know, yeah. I mean, before something goes wrong. Yeah, because yeah, so many people that, that we talk to, you know, they they just, oh, well, we went to premarital counseling. Well, that was five years ago. That was yeah. 10 years ago. My wife just said it perfectly. So throughout the ebbs and flows of our marriage, throughout our life, we change. Mm -hmm. We grow. Some of us stay stagnant. Who are but, you now? But, but where are yeah. you now in this marriage? I don't care if you've been married six months, six years, 60 years. A lot of things have changed and time has passed right. in each one of those yeah. you know, eras there. Mm -hmm. So where are you now? And we, we talk about this like a, a lot in post-marital counseling, mm -hmm. uh, you know, identifying, you know, what where your spouse is now, right? Can you tell me, you know, from the time you got married till today, what has changed with your spouse that you recognize? Mm -hmm. And she'll probably have a whole different list. <laughs> Okay. I mean, even having those conversations, there's a lot like we had talked before, I think it was communication on the yeah. episode we did, where we go to dinner and couples are at dinner and they're not talking. Mm. And oh so, God. and it doesn't necessarily mean yes. they've grown apart, but they just don't know. They could be empty nesters now and that's new. It's like, we have to get back to, and it's like, what it's, you, know, you, what? you have to date your wife again. Right. But you know, yeah. my thing is, I was even thinking, it's not even, don't even try to get back to 22 or 21 years old. That's How about this is new, I'm hot and I'm, I'm now your new lover. I mean, you know, yeah. see me as the woman I am now in the season that I'm in now in the season you're in now. And let's do this. Let's refresh this and restore this, you know, with a newness, exactly. you know, and approach it from a beginning of, you know, this is us now where your kids are like, yeah. look well, at you Troy guys. Definitely you know, he sees you now that every time you start talking, he starts cheesing. I don't know if you guys can see this. But what? He gets his big old grin like, yeah, I see you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so... I, I'm, I'm gonna bypass that one. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, when you're wh whether you're dating or whether you're 
engaged or whether you're getting engaged, there's some questions that, questions that you need to ask each other. Yes. Not just the woman asking the man, but vice versa. Both of you guys need to ask each other questions here. And I'm not talking about what's your favorite color and what <laughs> food you like to eat and everything like that. I'm talking about what are you expecting yeah. in this in, in this marriage to be? Expectations. Expectations. Yeah. That's the very first thing. Expectations of your marriage. You know, you want to have children. Mm. You know, <laughs> who are we with? It was you, wasn't it? Well, I think you, you came over. Uh, you said, did, was that you that said you want to have six? Oh, no, no, no. That was no. another couple. No, it was no, not. That was another no, couple. It was I'm not. sorry. I'm sorry. That was someone else. Oh, Lord. <laughs> But Jesus wanted the one to have six, all six kids, and the other one was content with having two, right? But they didn't realize it because they were already married. But they didn't have that discussion. They didn't have the conversation. They didn't have the conversation. Oh, that was the so, first conversation. Oh. So if you're from a big family, I know, yeah. right? if you're from a big family, and your you know your husband or your wife, they're not. And they're not used to a lot of people uh, sharing the pot with them and things like that. You know, that's something that you have to discuss. Okay, so now we're on the topic of having kids. You know, can you afford to have a child? You know, we're in our partner right now. You know, <laughs> what if we have twins? <laughs> can we afford to get out of this lease? Right, can we right. afford to get into something yeah, else? Even childcare for that if you're both working yeah. parents. But there's so much it, it, exactly, you know. Sure. So these are things that people don't think about. They, 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 they jump into a marriage or they get pregnant and then they get married or don't get married or whatever. But, you know, I just don't, I don't get it. I, I really don't get it. And, you know, I, I, anyway, so things that you have to So expectations of marriage, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, how are we going to resolve our conflicts? How are we going to pay our bills? How are we going to pay our bills? You know, mm -hmm. the, the two big things in, in, in marriage that cause divorce all the time. Finances and communications, mm -hmm. right? So, how are we gonna pay our bills? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if That's you're only working a minimum wage yeah. job and you want to have six kids, you, need to start you, you, you got a problem there. Right. right. <laughs> That's one of the reasons why we are approaching that in our conference. Yeah. You know, because that is it's a key. Incidentally, we have six kids. I don't know what else. We have uh, four girls and two boys. <laughs> Didn't think about that. I know, right? You know, um, so important work. I know, right? <laughs> then um, we get into uh, the question about role concepts, right? Yeah. Who's taking the trash out? Who's, who's taking, taking the trash, trash out? Who's making the bed in the who's, morning? Who's cleaning up? Exactly. You know? you know, do we do it together as a yeah. partnership, which is what they're it's supposed good. to do anyway? But you know, and here's a biggie. You know, you got a woman that's uh, been a daddy's girl all their life. No offense. You got a woman that's been a daddy's girl all their life, and they're not. They, they, I'm getting married, and I'm gonna eat bonbons, and I'm gonna raise the kids, and I'm gonna uh, go to PTA oh meetings with well. and, the, and then the husband is like, I'm dating myself, right? <laughs> but, but then the husband is like, uh, uh, we need something to help with these bills here, you know. And I mean, I'm you know over fifty. And I come from that generation where the man is the provider and he takes over, and, which I still live You're like that. Provider. You know, thank you. But so my wife doesn't have to work, but she does because it's fulfilling for her and, and you know, and her, her career, her education, her background, all of that. So the thing is, is that have you had that conversation? If, if, if we were going into this marriage and <laughs> And I'm, if I'm only making minimum wage and uh, I'm thinking that we're going to stack our money and do whatever, you know, and, and then I come to find out we get married, uh, don't you have a job? You knew I had no job when you married me. You've got to have a plan. You have I mean, to have a plan. And that's why playing together is so very important. You don't exactly. wait to get married for together. You're dating and you. this is something that you're talking about, a future, or, you know, or you just got engaged. You start your prayer life together now. Exactly. You start know, praying on the things that you don't have the answers to. How about that? Yeah. You know, when you're talking about money, uh, I, you know, my wife isn't here for me to ask, so I'm just going to share that. Is she on? Tia, you don't want to ask a question. <laughs> Call in, <laughs> After the show, though. After the show. <laughs> no, you call in now. You know, I got your back. <laughs> you know, um, me, me and my wife have a. Uh, have had financial struggles in the beginning of our marriage. Okay. They're different than what 
uh, most couples I think go through because you know we come from two very different financial philosophies when we dated for the five years you know she taught me about savings accounts and you know don't spend every dollar you, you get and, you know but then his wife is a millennial, but she's very, she talks like, you know, us older people. You yeah. are brilliant. <laughs> yeah, she's, yeah, she's pretty legit. She's pretty legit. Yeah, but, she's but, you know, yeah. um, when, during that time that we separated, you know, I, I learned a lot about money through growing a business. And, you know, when we got back together, she was saying, okay, well, we're going to save this much. We're going to tie this much. I said, well, I'm with you on the tide, mm -hmm. but I believe in growing money now. So, you know, our, our uh, conversation about money was very different from the first one we had. The first okay. one was like, why are you, what are you doing? Why are you spending every dollar you have? Why is your bank account always negative? Why are you not paying your phone bill? And now it's like, hey, look, um, I, want, I want to take this money and I want to go buy this company or I want to take this money and I want to go invest in this. And she's like, whoa, wait a minute. Well, I, you have to have that, that discussion, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, you really do. But you do. Yeah. And the fact that you're open with it, that's the thing so many people are they, you know, they hide with money or they shop and their mm -hmm. mate doesn't yeah. know. I mean, yeah. that's that's not sowing what you want to see. Yeah, you, know, exactly. it's, yeah. you want that unity, not that division. And so the fact that you had taken that to your wife, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, I got an idea. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, we, and, we have allowances, you yeah. know? Yeah. yeah, there's yeah. ways to do it. And exactly. I mean, everybody has their own way. There's no, you know, cookie cutter way. There's a way that works for you. Exactly. So we're winding down now, but uh, just want to give some takeaways for the benefits of having premarital counseling. And a good place to start uh, is, again, with one, with prayer. Two, and I'm not promoting this book or anything, but there is a... a ah, <laughs> is, she is she on there? His wife just said, oh, I'm definitely paying attention. <laughs> Hey, Tim. Good to see I you. Love I love it. I love it. I love it. See your present. I always say that. I'm like, I can't see you. I know you can see us. Can't see yeah. it, but I'm, I can feel you. Yeah. But anyway, I'm, I'm not promoting this book, but a good way to learn your mate is a book by, is it, it's not Les Parole, but it's uh, The Five Love Languages. Uh, that's, oh, yeah. That's, that's um, Gary. Book. Yeah. You know they have an app now, too? Oh yeah, but really? well, actually they have a few. They, they have like five business languages. There's a couple wow. other books mm -hmm. that have uh, generated from that. But uh, that's a good place to uh, yeah. to start. Uh, two, learn your spouse or a spouse to be. All right, there's always so much to learn about your spouse. Yeah, you know, and and you know when I say learn about your spouse, learn what it takes to be a good husband or a good wife. All right, mm -hmm. agree. Next, we want to do some fire starters. Okay, I talked about the two things that uh, are prevalent in you know the divorces of today: <laughs> communication and, and finances. Mm -hmm. Finances is a fire starter. You have to have that talk. Who's going to pay the bills? <laughs> All right, you know, if both of you are working, uh, you know, can I just go buy a car without consulting with my wife? Mm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that may not work out too well. Unless I get a car, she like too. Yeah. <laughs> man. But, so it's really important to be honest about your uh, your finances and who's spending money and you know what the limit. What are the limits of spending the money? Uh, you know, I mean, you know, can I go out and just spend five, six hundred dollars in a day? Without consulting her, I mean, is yeah, there a limit? Yeah, there a limit. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. know, some people. I mean, yeah. you know, it's like some people don't have to call about twenty five dollars. Some people, you know, exactly. some people do. You know, have yeah. hundred or and it just depends yeah. on what you're trying to do, what you're trying to grow. You exactly. know, what's your what's your plan is. Yeah, yeah the plan. What you're working for. You and, and you know, um, the last one is core values. Mm -hmm. What are your yeah. values? Yeah. You know, yeah. what 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 will you not stand for in a marriage? What will you not stand for? Uh, you know, your boundaries. What, what are your boundaries? Yeah. I mean, you know, what are you willing to accept? What are you willing not to accept? I'm not willing to accept dishes. Just kidding, man. Just kidding. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> My boy has been doing a great job with the dishes. Uh, I got a. You got a thing with dishes? No, no, no. I've been I've been doing the dishes for a majority of our marriage, and she's kind of been in and out with that. So we talked about that in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But uh, recently, I was like, I. I I can't. The dishes are the dishes are attacking me, you know. And, <laughs> and so she said, "All right, I'll take care." We have a deal. 
So, I do all the cooking. She does all the dishes. Mm -hmm. Works out perfect every time. Oh my yeah. God, he's cooking. Oh. Yeah, he's a legit cook. Oh. Gospel chef That's is what we call him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Well, I'll, I'll finance a restaurant and uh, uh -oh. get, get Tori uh -oh. get Tori to get started. <laughs> so, in closing, guys, you know, marriage counseling is never a bad idea. Yeah. You know, some people say, oh, you know, we're cool, we're good, you know, we don't have any issues. <clears throat> Wrong answer. You don't know what you guys have. You know, we talked about that key, about the jagged edges, yeah. about the ebbs and flow of, of life. I mean, anything can happen. You know, we, we talk about several different scenarios, but what happens if one of, one of you get sick in the marriage? Mm -hmm. And what if you've only been married for a couple months and mm -hmm. someone takes ill? I mean, that so happened, that's so that happened to a friend of mine. That happened to us. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I got really sick, you know, uh, when we first got married. So, I mean, it, it can happen. It's, it's reality. It is. Yeah. And that's what, that's your test. You will have those tests. Exactly. They will come. Exactly. Secondly, there's no embarrassment about seeking premarital or oh, any okay. type of counseling. No. Yeah. As a matter of fact, it's prevented. Yeah. I think a it's wife prevented. Actually, well, actually, yeah. Because my wife and I were talking about this last night about getting, what was it, the earlier today? I think we were talking about earlier today where we were talking about the stigma with African Americans, oh, yeah. you know, yeah, trying to, or, or, yeah, that was today, African Americans not doing any type of counseling. Mm. We need mental health counseling. All right. We talked to so many people that have daddy issues, that, you know, mommy issues, well, I mean, whatever the case is. A lot is. of people do, and a lot of cultures do, but. We as a culture have gone through so much that is so deep seated from racism and everything else. So over the years, that you know that is, um, you know that has affected families, and exactly. so it does affect how one interacts with others and trust and all of that. And so it's very important, you know, that we um, we love ourselves, yep. you know, and we love our families, and we keep those. That's the values. Exactly. Those are some values. Yeah. So let's overcome that stigma and get the help that we all need yes. for ensuring yes. happy, God-centered yes. marriages. Yes. Right? yes. So in, in closing, we want to thank you guys for joining in. Yeah. Don't hang up yet. Don't leave yet because we have some announcements. Um, we want to thank our guest, Mr. Bailey Jordan, Bailey Jordan with Affinity Weddings Magazine. We want to publicly thank you, too, for having us. Um, you know, that we were able to, um, we had the photo shoot last week for your, uh, your audition that's, is it coming out in the fall? You want to tell me what you're doing with us? Yeah. Uh, tie into that? Um, okay. Yeah. So, um, oh, man. So we have we haven't spoil it. we haven't released this to uh, to the rest of the Infinity Weddings world oh, yet. I'm well, sorry. Okay, so the, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Can I put you on the spot? No, 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 it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. But something big is coming, and uh, we'll, we'll be happy to share it with you all soon. Okay. Does it involve us? It does involve you all. Okay. <laughs> you guys are part of it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank God. So, um, as you guys know, our conference is coming up October 11th and 12th. Tickets are on sale now. They went on sale August 1st, last week. So get your tickets now. You can go to eventbrite.com. And there was a small delay with our website, but our website will be up this week, and it's iforeverwill.com. You can purchase tickets there, or you can go while you're on Facebook. You can go to our uh, page, and you can uh, click on the button for our tickets. Uh, for the conference, I'm sorry, and you can go purchase tickets there. The conference is going to be jam packed. We have entertainment. We have a white party, red a white carpet, red carpet. Yes. Uh, we have what? speakers, uh, financial advisors. I mean, we're, we're going to take care of you guys. Okay. Yes. Um, also, August twentieth, we'll be live at Sugars. Cajun cuisine. My yes. wife is all excited over here. So but uh, we're, we're going to be live there. Um, that was delicious. Yeah. But anyway, uh, we're going to be on stage there. And it's going to be a live setting, guys. So come out, ask your questions. Uh, you know, Any questions that you guys have regarding uh, marriage or relationships or you know, my man cheated. What do I do? Uh, what, whatever you guys want to bring up, you know, we're, we're going to be there. To, we're going to be there to answer your questions. All right. So that's <laughs> that's August twentieth, and, uh, and and it's going to be late. So it's it's the same time as our show, August twentieth at ten p.m. But the food is great. The, the the drinks are great if if you guys are into that. And 
the uh, the venue is going to be nice because we're going to be there. We'll have right? to work that out because I think the show starts at nine, so we'll have to work that out. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll we'll let you guys know, yeah. uh, you know, within the next uh, week or so. But anyway, uh, we want to uh, thank you guys again for joining us with our first uh, live presentation Yay! here. Yay! At, Praise uh, be to God, Hallelujah! Exactly. And we want to give a shout out to. Uh, Pastor Chris and Pastor Delicia for uh, you know giving us this opportunity, and they're at GospelRadioNation.com. Tune in, guys. So we're going to close out in prayer. You want to close out in prayer, babe? Yes. Sure. All right. Let's go. Let's do this. Father God, Lord Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you for always, always going before us, and so you have provided for us on this day, Lord Jesus. You help us close out this day. We're safe and sound, Lord, and we're just putting you first and foremost. And yes. we give you thanks, Lord, as we look forward to what you're going to do, Lord. So as we rest in you tonight, taking the information that we receive and just pondering it, discussing it, sharing it, Lord, we ask that you be, you be at the center of it all, Father God. And we just give you thanks for all the blessings, Lord, that you have for us that we're living in right now. And just for you being God and who you are as majesty, all majesty, all powerful all dominion. You're everything, Lord. We thank you and we praise you. We continue to seek you in your sweet name. Amen. 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 All right, guys, we thank you and we'll see you next week. Same place, same time. Bye. Have a good night. Bye. Love you.